Search Query Performance Report is an extremely valuable tool for Amazon sellers. And recently it got available through this API, so all of the tools will develop the reporting and you need to get familiar with it. My real profit was doing this for more than a year, so I have a ton of data backed in terms of understanding this report. And today we're gonna cover a topic of how the data is calculated in this report. Because if you're gonna do your comparison, like does it match with my PPC? No. Does it match with my own estimation? No. Does it match with anything? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. There are a lot of ifs and variables that you need to take into account uh, to try to match to this report. And today, I'm gonna cover this very, very important topic. Let's start. Welcome to this channel. My name is Damian. I'm co-founder of My Real Profit. Uh, we provide analytics software solutions for Amazon sellers, and there is a bunch of different reports that we do. And today, let's talk about SQP analytics. So today, I will go through all of the KPIs that are included in this report, and I will explain you the calculation methodology and what are the common issues you will face will try when trying to understand this data. So let's start. Okay. So first of all. Um, just a quick reminder, in order to navigate this report, you need to have brand analytics and you go to brands, brand analytics, you click on it, then you go to search analytics and click on search query performance. Your report is available by Brent and Asen, but if you are not available with this report um, in this or in that quarter, I will place a video about the basics of this report. You have four different funnel metrics here. It's basically impressions, clicks, add to carts and purchases. Yeah. So this is each step when the customer explores your product, make a decision to click on it, make a decision to add it to cart, and then finally purchase the product. As a lot of tools will now provide you with this data, there is a there is a lot of things that you need to take into account because you will get misleading insights from this report otherwise. Okay, so as I mentioned, this report contains 1000 keywords. You can see all of them here. You can download the data and then summarize them on your, or maybe you're using a tool. Number one issue that you will get, if you sum up your clicks, your add to carts, your purchases and calculate your total market share for all keywords, it will be misleading. The reason for that, because it also contains a ton of keywords where you're not relevant and you most likely make zero purchases and they might have like 4 million in search volume. And obviously you should exclude this keyword. Yeah. So number one problem, it includes irrelevant keywords. Let me show you an example. Here is the data by search query score. So obviously like chose my best performing keywords. If I do filter by search query volume, clicking here, I can now see that number one keyword has 286,000 search volume and my click, I got only one click from this keyword. So if you will just summarize all of the keywords and then calculate like what's my market share, this keyword could randomly appear for one week, but then this keyword will be missing for another week. Yep. And obviously your market share number percentage will change. Solution to this, track data for specific keyword groups. Filter data by keyword, make data by like analysis by keyword groups and so on. So this is like a very general issue. Now let's talk about other metrics. Let's talk about search query volume. Search query volume, it's amount of searches for that specific keyword. Then you can do the comparison of this search volume to let's say Helium 10. Yeah, and people, there were a lot of talks about like Helium 10 is not matching the search volume that is provided in SQP. The reason that Helium 10 calculates search volume uh, based on multiple clicks. So that means if customer, let's say, made four clicks on the product, they estimate that the search volume equals to four. While Amazon calculates search volume is the amount of unique customers searching for this product in search bar. So it's different, yeah? So that's why it's not matching. Helium will get a little bit higher and this one will be a bit lower. But you know, as this available through the API, I assume it will get extremely um, accurate uh, tools, estimations, like sales estimation by those companies like Helium Jungle, SmartScout and so on. Okay, now let's deep dive into those funnel metrics and let's start with impressions. So number one issue is impression. It's calculated differently for desktop and mobile. Okay, so let me explain. Uh, impression is a metric that shows uh, you how many views you got. Yeah? The view is counted when your product got loaded on the device. And because you have desktop and mobile, the load uh, logic, loading logic is different. On mobile, it's an infinite scroll. There is no pages. Yeah. 
and on desktop you have pages so the calculation of you is different so let me show you here is the desktop version of amazon yeah so i entered vitamin d and now i'm creating impressions for all of those products as you remember it only contains sponsored products and organic does not contain brands and video it does not contain customers frequently viewed we will get back to this later so yeah now um i opened and i got instantly 48 results yeah so all of them are getting a uh, impression yeah so here is the issue I might not scroll until the end of the page, but I'm still getting an impression. Yeah, so it's kind of a little bit inflated. Now let's open exact the same page on mobile. So I need to click inspect. I will change it to the iPhone 14 Pro Max and I will refresh my page. Here is the mobile view. Let's now scroll fast to identify where Amazon will load additional products. Till here. Yeah. So this is, those are the products that got loaded. It also differs uh, per category, but what we saw, let me, let's say vitamin D3. And now let's do scroll very fast. Yeah, you see it's still the same. So one, two, uh -huh. then all of this is not included. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2021 sometimes it's 15 sometimes it's 20 so that's that that number varies and more and on desktop is 48 now um, based on this your impression share is mixed so does it mean you should not trust this metric no you should just get better understanding on how to how to interpret this metric so if it shows that my impression is let's say two percent yeah it doesn't mean that all of the customers of those two percent customers saw your product for me personally, uh, to make long story short, I believe if your organic rank is about seven, uh, because after seven you get additional ad placements and everything, or six, you are not getting a lot of visibility. Most likely those impressions are not real, like half of them. That's the issue that you can get with impressions. Now let's move forward to clicks. My opinion, clicks are the most accurate metric in this report. Clicks, I always push for clicks. Like if you wanted to understand your share, Look at your click share. Yeah, purchase share is also not bad, but click share just has the least amount of variables. Yeah, so customers sees your product, they click on it. So clicks, there's nothing really to explain. Yeah, all clicks are click count per keyword. Here is the issue that you might face. I can now compare my PPC clicks to SQP clicks and I will tell you no, because number one, you can get the search term report from Amazon. So you will see your clicks by search term. Yeah, not by keyword by search term, but uh, it only includes sponsor products and it only includes top of search and rest of search. It does not include this highly rated widget, which is this one. However, it's part of top of search, yeah? So in terms of trying to combine the data with other reports, you will face challenges, yeah? And those are the challenges. Okay, so my, you might think clicks are, clicks are great for the comparison with your PPC report, but reality, unfortunately, is no. Uh, because it only contains sponsored products. Uh, and if you would, let's say, you have list of your sponsored product campaign, then you need to do the search term report to see the performance by each search term. And then on the search term report, you cannot see the placement. And uh, it only includes sponsored products top of search and the rest of search. It does not include product detail pages, yeah? And it also does not include the top of search widget, which is called highly rated from frequently shopped brands and so on, yeah? It's part of top of search. However, it's not included in SQP. And those minor things uh, will not allow you to see the comparison. Um, while I'm saying this, uh, I feel that you already think, wow, I don't need to use SQP report at all. That's completely wrong. It's a ton of value. Uh, I'm going to make a lot of videos on this report. We're going to also at my real profit. We have this report. I'm uh, making a, like doing a walkthrough video with all of my clients. And then I basically tell them like 10 different use cases for this report. Yeah. And it is a ton of them. PPC optimization, market share optimization, uh, listing optimization, relevancy understanding. It's, it's, it's a bunch of things, very strategic tool. Now add to cards and purchases. I will combine them together because it's kind of similar. So the problem is that uh, if customer clicks on your product and they uh, start exploring some other products, uh, sometimes the purchase will not be attributed to the SQP report. So you might get purchased, but you don't get it. 
what do we see that customers that have a lot of listings, let's say, I don't know, under one parent, you have hundred childs. This is where it got messy uh, because you will get a lot of clicks, but you get like zero, maybe three, four or five purchases. Yeah. When you have single parent variation, it's going to be much more accurate. You see doing well. So that's where you also uh, might feel that the tool is not making a lot of sense, but that could be because your customers are jumping between the products and sometimes SQP report is losing the connection and does not attribute this purchase to this report. Yeah. Overall, you need to understand that it works exactly the same for your competitors. So it's kind of okay. What do we see in 80% of the cases? It's working fine. What I can tell you here, the purchases are not, are using 24 hour attribution window. So if customer click made the purchase after 24 hours, it will not be attributed. So on average, like 80% 80, 80 of purchases happen same day. Yeah. Then happens out of this attribution window. So like 20% will be missing. Then the next thing is second, it might not contain those um, switching between your variations. Yeah, it might lose uh, this connection. Uh, so those are the, the variables that you might face with the purchases. Okay, so we basically covered most of the issues that you might face with this report. What is my recommendation? Uh, number one, use this report to track your search volume. This is the best place to do it. Number two, use this report to identify on which keywords you maximize your visibility uh, and use impression share metric for this. This information I usually share when we do the walkthrough meetings uh, on a demo call. So, but long story short, your impression share uh, can can have a limit and it calculates uh, calculated based on how many products you have per one keyword because you can only have organic spot and sponsor product spot. Use this report to understand your click share and seeing the difference between impression share and click share. If your impression share is high and your click share is low, your relevancy is low, like in terms of click through rate, or maybe your pricing, your listing, your content is not good enough. Track purchase share as well. But if you see that your amount of purchases is small, use click share. I would recommend you to use ClickShare. That would be the better way uh, to do the analysis. Okay, so there are quite a lot of use cases. I believe I'm just gonna make a mini guide about SQP report and will show you from A to Z process of analysis this report. So then you can implement in your business. Um, also, this report is very helpful if you guys have branded traffic uh, because if you track, if, if you get branded search volume, you can track it here and you can track what percentage of the market share you hold for your branded search terms. And to make long story short, if your purchase share is below 80%, you're doing bad. If it's about 80%, you're doing okay. If you're doing about 95% and you spend money on ads, try to lower your budget week over week, optimize the spend. Okay. If you're interested how it looks like at my real profit, uh, we're going to publish a new update soon. So it will change, but still it's very helpful. As you can see, he, we, um, encourage you to track your dynamic of your search volume and purchase share and click share to understand if your market share is going up or going down. This is extremely helpful and you can filter it by specific product, uh, sorry. And you can filter it by specific keyword yeah, or keyword group. We also do the data like by keyword, by week, and then you have your PPC spend, which is search term spend, and then relevancy analysis, which is our own custom scoring system from zero to 10. In this case, you will understand, okay, my purchase share is going up. And the reason is because of my PPC spend went up, my pricing went down and my relevance increased for this keyword. Yeah. So those are, will be the use cases. So yeah, so that's how it looks like on our platform, you know, the keywords, uh, performance, uh, your shares, your spend and your relevancy. I believe this is the most important and valuable information you can get from here. And then you will be able to do a bunch of interesting things here. As well as, you know, we have the click through rate, add to cart rate, conversion rate, your comparison of brand to market performance, which will allow you to identify on which step of the funnel you need to optimize your listing. If it's main image, if it's titles, if it's a uh, product detail page, or it's just premium product, your add to cart rate is, if your add to cart rate is lower than market average, you're premium, you're doing, um, you're selling at higher price. And that's the reason why you get lower at to carry. Thank you so much for watching this video. That's it. Uh, put a like button, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, leave your questions. I would love to answer them. And uh, if you need a solution that can help you with automating the search query performance report, LTV analytics, profits, inventory, and so on, and can be customized, 
We turn chaos into insights since 2020, so we would love to help. Have a great day. Bye-bye.